what's going on with the gearbox is that the propeller is too big for for the engine. The gearbox we have relies on a system of cones or in friction to engage the reverse and the forward and are they being old or it being overpowered. The cones are slipping on each other causing friction which heats up the engine and since in fact that's what's causing the engine to overheat because it just said here on the manual now that the the, the gearbox and the engine share the same lubrication system. Mm. So the hot the oil is getting hot not from the engine running. It's getting hot I think it's getting hot from the gearbox. Mm -hmm. And now there's so much slippage, so much friction between the gearbox, the, between the cones, it's basically a, a, a friction welder at this point. Like when I leave the engine on forward gear a while, I, I, I literally cannot take the forward gear out anymore, it sticks. Yeah, the harder I, I, it gets, the more the it sticks. The harder it gets, the more it sticks together, so... And you were explaining this might also be why in reverse it's working better than in forward gear. Yes, it's working better in reverse because we're getting less slippage because the way the cones are built, when you reverse it's pulling and it has more, I guess more, as it pulls the cone fits better mm -hmm. and, and the cone in reverse is probably a lot less worn than the cone in forward because the cone in forward has been used more, yeah. 99% of the time you put the engine on forward gear and once in a while you put it in reverse. We're looking at not only just trying to get a hold of a smaller prop but also then the gearbox is going to be need to be serviced, possible new cones, shit like that. Yeah. The gearbox needed to come off and we needed the help of a diesel mechanic. Robbie took the afternoon to remove the coupler, bolts, and other engine parts that were in the way or holding it in place. In the end, the space was too small to fully extricate it, so we would need to borrow the chain lift again to raise the whole engine slightly up. We didn't have an oil change pump to take all the oil out, so just by cracking the gearbox off, we emptied the engine oil into a bin. The rest of the oil couldn't go very much further as I put a plug to stop the rest of it from traveling into the bilge. But still, this was a nice and messy task. That's how much oil was in our engine. Used oil would go to the boatyard facilities and the gearbox to the diesel mechanic. Meanwhile, we had been trying to get our actual main propulsion system working. Changing the mainsail furler rope and reconnecting all those lines back to the boom. This used line was almost just right, just a little tight. What are you doing there? A normal knot. Granny knot is what you're Granny saying? Knot, yeah. We were hoping that by changing the line and going over the whole system, that the furler would work a little more smoothly now. We decided to run the line by feeding through some stiff fishing wire there was something getting in the way. When the rope was in there, it just didn't seem right. Hmm. Maybe we had to clean the boom out. Is there a torch light by any chance? I, I knew we should have hung in from the side of the 
Holy shit. Was there any birds in it? Oh. Ooh. Ew. Okay, a little bit of problem solving here. We decided that it goes from the furler into the boom, out the boom. There's a, a shiv there. Oh yeah, that feels so much better. Through a block at the base of the mast and towards the cockpit. We also attach the vang, which helps control and bring the boom down. Some penetrating lube was essential to this decredding task. Then we're gonna put some lube paper. Thank you. And then we wound up the new line into the furler drum. We were still working on getting various electronics working because we finally had those new batteries on the boat. We just ran a, a cable to our central backbone. We're adding another cable for the four nav light. We know we can run as many cables as will fit within the backbone by sticking a rigid lifeline up in there. We have an old VHF radio connected now so we can communicate over many more nautical miles. And this cable being cut will connect the new green and red forward nav light. Yeah, it works really good on this hot wires. If the wire is too soft, I need a female blue. I have a male blue. Positive connected to the switchboard, negative connected to the bar here. And we would just need to feed our new wires through some tiny holes. We go, we go, keep going, keep going, keep going. We were also grappling with the windless electrical situation. 
it will simply need some new wires too. This wire is broken, so we have to replace. We're gonna replace all the wires on it, and hopefully by the time we plug it back in, <laughs> forward is forward, up and down is up and down, and we, have, we don't bust the whole thing. And with what we finally thought was a good break in the wind, a mainsail session. We hope to hoist it and to roll it in and out several times. However, as we raised it, the wind started blowing harder and harder. Where does that put us now in terms of sailing? Our mainsail sucks. It doesn't roll in and out properly still. And our engine sucks. Oh, and I almost forgot, we can't steer the boat. We have a wooden post to be able to move the rudder back and forth. <laughs>